everyone. Welcome to 6SO95. Um, I, I, thanks for registering for this class. I uh, hope you like it. Uh, my name is Srini Devadas. I'm a professor of computer science at uh, MIT, uh, obviously. Um, but, uh, and I've been teaching at MIT for, uh, for 30 years, so I've been at it for a while. Um, the reason I'm teaching this IAP class is because um, I, uh, I want to try out um, this, this way of teaching programming that starts with uh, the recreational world of mathematical puzzles, algorithmic puzzles, and I want to connect it up to, um, uh, to writing programs. Um, and uh, I, I have taught this material uh, before in uh, 6009 that I think some of you are uh, registered for, uh, but, uh, but I wanted to teach it in a, in, in a more interactive, uh, informal setting. And uh, I should mention that uh, I, I wrote a book on this, which is a, a book that's uh, uh, recommended, though not required, for 6009. And so uh, you might see this in the MIT Press uh, uh, bookstore and other places. Uh, and most of the material I'm going to cover here um, is, is, is from the book. Uh, but uh, I don't want you to read the book, because I, I want you to listen to uh, uh, my uh, explanations for the puzzles and, and try and think of, of the uh, the solutions yourself, and, and then uh, obviously uh, do some amount of coding, uh, 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 not during lecture, uh, but uh, offline, and I'll show you some uh, solutions to the puzzles, and there'll be some exercises. Um, so if, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on logistics. Uh, this is an, an IAP class. As I mentioned, uh, um, I'd like this to be informal and relaxed. Um, so we meet uh, every day uh, for two weeks. Uh, we have the holiday coming up on Monday, so we'll have uh, nine total lectures, uh, roughly for an hour. Um, might spill over, but uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll be okay with it because uh, you don't have you know, another class to go to at noon. Uh, and uh, if you do, uh, yeah, uh, well, let me know, and uh, I'll, I'll give you that five minutes of uh, overflow personally uh, at, at, some, at, at a time of your choosing. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll keep, uh, keep on time. Uh, so, uh, and in terms of uh, work, I mean, this is a pass-fail. It's a, it's a four-credit class. Uh, I know some of you may be listeners, but uh, some of you are registered for it, so I'll have to assign you a grade. Uh, so there will be some exercises, and I'm going to make it very simple. Um, you'll, it'll, uh, there'll be exercises up on the website. They'll be due you know, two days from when I put them up. And uh, you'll have options in terms of whether to do a really simple exercise that's you know, probably going to take about a five minutes or do something harder. Right? And for each of the puzzles, there's a, a two or three exercises. And uh, you get to do all of them if you want. Uh, you can choose to do uh, uh, one or the other. All right? Um, I'll, I'm going to have office hours uh, every day uh, from 1 to 2. I don't plan on putting solutions up to the exercises, uh, the solutions to the, to the puzzles themselves. Uh, They'll be shown mostly in lecture and, and put up uh, on, on the Stellar website. Uh, but the solutions to the exercises, uh, I, I'm not going to put up. But if you ever get stuck, well, that's what office hours are for. And uh, um, uh, if you can't solve the exercises, I'll help you solve them. All right? So uh, with that, without further ado, let's, let's dive in and uh, talk, about, uh, talk about puzzles and uh, solving puzzles using uh, uh, algorithms and then, and then programs. Um, I'd really like this to be interactive, so uh, please ask questions uh, and um, uh, suggest uh, solutions that I haven't thought of. You know, that'd be great. In my second edition, you know, whenever that is, you'll get credit for that. All right? Um, so uh, the first puzzle, uh, I, I tried to have, uh, uh, I don't know, funny titles for all of these puzzles, uh, intriguing. And so the, the, f the first puzzle is called You Will All Confirm. Um, it, this is really a, a warm-up puzzle. Um, as you'll see, I mean, this is true for any class. Uh, things are going to get more complicated as we go along. So we'll probably do 10 or 12 puzzles in the next two weeks. And uh, by the end, uh, you, you're going to see things uh, like memoization and dynamic programming and, and things like that, uh, but towards the end of next week. And uh, if you don't know what those mean, well, that's great because uh, hopefully uh, you, know, uh, you will know by the, by the end of the two weeks. And a lot of these uh, things are algorithmic uh, insights, are, are um, insights that uh, will help you in uh, course six classes for sure. And you know, perhaps uh, uh, even if you uh, follow uh, 
uh, a career outside of uh, outside of course six. All right. So um, uh, uh, this particular puzzle is, uh, as I said, uh, uh, a fairly simple puzzle, at least to describe. And uh, the setting is as follows. Um, so you're a gatekeeper um, at a baseball game. We'll just call it a baseball game because baseball players wear caps, and you know that's. that's uh, uh, the, most people are watching games with, with caps on. And so you're a gatekeeper, and there's a bunch of people uh, standing in line. Um, let's just say uh, uh, each of them uh, knows their number, and uh, this is Python, so the number starts at zero, okay, as opposed to one. And, and there's, there's a whole bunch of people standing uh, in line waiting to get in, and uh, they, they, they all have caps. And some of them you know, are wearing their caps uh, forwards, so with the, with the uh, 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 I guess, what do you call it? What's the front of the cap called? Uh, the shade, uh, the, the thing that gives you shade, uh, you know, up front. Uh, and uh, uh, so we just, we just say, let me try and draw this out. So, so this person is, is wearing uh, his cap like that, and, and this lady here uh, is, is wearing a, her cap like this. All right, so that's uh, forwards and that's backwards, okay? Um, so uh, your, uh, um, your job here is uh, straightforward. Um, you can only let all of these people in, in, into line, in, 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 sorry, into the stadium, the word in line, um, if uh, they all conform. Okay, so, uh, so they all have to wear their caps in a particular orientation, and you don't particularly care which one, all right? Um, and so they all have to be forwards, you know, all, uh, let's say, you know, 13 of them, um, or they all have to be backwards, right? Now, um, all of them know their position on the line, all right? So this person knows that uh, his position is zero, this uh, lady here knows that her position is one, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, and so, so obviously, um, um, you'd like to minimize the amount of work that you uh, do, and uh, you could uh, certainly choose, let's say you want everyone to be forwards. You could say, hey, lady in position one, flip your cap, right? Oh, I should mention something that uh, is important. So people have a different definition of forwards and backwards. You know, they, it, it's sort of what's natural and what's unnatural to them. So, so it, it's, we think that this person has his cap on forwards. Uh, you know, but for, for all you know, he thinks he's got his cap on backwards or vice versa. Right? So you can't uh, assume that uh, the definition of forwards and backwards is uh, identical for all of the people in line and, 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 and really is the same as your definition. I mean, if it seems kind of unreasonable, hey, I mean, this is a puzzle, okay? Um, so so, so let's, let's, uh, let's not argue about that. We can argue about other things, like how to write Python programs properly. Um, so, so what you have to do now is you have to call out commands uh, that, that correspond to saying, person in position zero, flip your cap, right? That's all you can say. You can just say, flip your cap, right? I mean, you can obviously see how these caps are oriented, and uh, you can ask, uh, let's say that you had something like that. I'm just making this up as I go along, um, in terms of, uh, I'm not gonna draw all the caps here, uh, but this is what it looks like. Um, and so you see, uh, in, according to you, you know, you see F, B, B in terms of forwards and backwards. And um, let's say you decide uh, that uh, you want everyone to have their, their cap on uh, forwards, then you, would, you could say, uh, person in position one, flip your cap, person in position two, flip your cap, and then person in position four, seven, et cetera, right? And you wanna make it easier on yourself because uh, people do know uh, their uh, indices, their positions in line. And so you can say, to save yourself some trouble, you could say people in positions one through two, and the implication is that it's inclusive, flip your caps, right? And so that takes care of um, these two. Uh, and perhaps, you know, eight here and nine, you know, had their caps on. Um, backwards, and you could say uh, people in positions seven through nine flip your caps, right? So in this particular example, assuming that uh, things ended with uh, 10 people in line, zero through nine, 
you could get away with uh, uh, three uh, uh, commands. You could say one through two. And the implication, as I said, is this is inclusive. Flip. And then you could say uh, uh, four. Flip. And then you could say seven through nine. Flip. OK? Um, and um, if you did it the other way, uh, you could also say person at zero flip, and so this would go backwards. Person at three flip, um, obviously you can't say zero through three because that would be wrong. And, um, and then uh, you, could, you could say five through, five through six here. So you, you would get um, uh, three, uh, three commands uh, in that case as well. Uh, but uh, if, in fact, uh, for argument's sake, um, let's just say that uh, I'm going to just turn this into uh, 10 and put, it, put an um, F down here, then um, these three commands would still work um, if you wanted to uh, focus on the, on, on the Bs, on the backwards people, and make, make them go forwards. But if you wanted to make all of the forward people go backwards, you would need one, two, three, four, four commands. All right? So, um, so in this particular case, you're better off doing that as opposed to doing four commands. All right? So um, first straightforward question um, uh, is, um, uh, and I'm not talking about code yet, um, algorithmically, you know, just in terms of pseudocode, uh, and I'm happy with English. Um, how would you determine the minimum set of commands given a particular set of people? I mean, there's an arbitrary set of people. Um, you uh, want to make sure that you have the absolute minimum set of commands. And uh, you're going to have to use these intervals. So you definitely want to look for all the contiguous intervals. Because obviously, if you say 1 followed, and, and, and then that's a separate command, and you say 2. Um, uh, and, and that's a separate command, you end up having more uh, commands than necessary, right? So, uh, so anyone want to tell me, I, I guess roughly in, in, in terms of pseudocode, uh, how this would work? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, well, you could um, go down the line and yeah. uh, put them into groups. So okay. like, uh, you start with a zero, you know, iterate through, group them, and then whatever the second one is so um, if you have whatever the second group is, um, if it's F or B, those are the ones that need to be flipped because it's that's gonna be the minimum number of commands. And then so from what you pass through, whenever uh, you get to those, you just tell them to flip. Sounds good. Do you have anything to add to that? Right. Whichever is the Lower, Lower. That's good. Good. Excellent. Um, so both of you had it right. So uh, let me ex explain what uh, 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 these two gentlemen, what was your name? Ganatra. Ganatra. What? Yours? Fadi. Fadi? Yeah. Um, so Ganatra and Fadi said. Um, so, um, so basically, this is, um, as I said, uh, the natural algorithm um, uh, that you would use. The natural algorithm would be that you walk through uh, this list and you start computing what I would call, you call it groups, Gnatra, but I'd call them intervals, right? And an interval is, is something that is uh, unbroken. It's uh, contiguous. It's a contiguous set of people uh, who all have their caps in the same orientation, you know, be it forward or backwards. And uh, what you would do in this case is you would, you would compute um, uh, the, you, you'd say, I want to look at the forward intervals. And the forward intervals would be 0, 0 because that would essentially what you have in here. And going through that list, you would get, you would also say, I'm going to be computing the backward intervals. And in this case, you would you'd discover 1, 2 as the backward, uh, backwards interval. So I'm going to write them out like that. And uh, in general, in the mathematical notation, when you put uh, square brackets, um, th these are closed intervals, right? So, so 0 is included. And we're going to see a puzzle where you might see something a little bit different. So I wanted to point that out. So 1, 2 are both inside this interval. And um, these two you would generate as you would, you would go through the list. And then you would generate uh, 3, 3 over here. And then you would generate 4, 
Uh, yeah, that's right. Just four. Oh, I'm sorry, four, four over here. Uh, if you want to call it an, uh, an interval, you could represent this differently. Uh, and there's nothing that's stopping you in Python to to have um, uh, these uh, 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 slightly more complicated representation where you just have zero here as a number, and if it's just a number, then it represents uh, an interval of of, of length one. Uh, but let's just be uh, uniform about this. Uh, usually, when you have special cases. And if you do things heterogeneously, uh, then you have more code to write. Right? It might get more efficient, but there's usually more, more, more code to write. So you do 4, 4 here, and then uh, you'd go up, and, and then you'd have uh, 5, comma 6. And then you would do 7, comma, uh, I'm sorry, five, 7, comma 9. Right? So this is the first time uh, you actually have something in, interesting in the sense that the interval has um, uh, a representation that only has two numbers in it, whereas uh, you actually have three people in that interval, right? And uh, obviously, this could be arbitrarily large uh, in, in the context of uh, people getting into a baseball game. Um, and so 7 through 9, and then finally here, 10 through 10, right? And so now you go ahead and you count, um, and you realize that there's four intervals here and three intervals here. And then you say, I'm going to go ahead and go with the uh, with the uh, backwards and asking the, the people who are, well, according to you, backwards to flip their caps so we're all good. All right? So, um, so I'm going to show you code uh, that, uh, uh, that implements exactly this uh, algorithm. And uh, while you see the code, I want you to think about this harder question. Um, this code is going to do exactly what we described. It's going to go compute. Um, all of these things, uh, and it is going to make a pass through the entire, as you can imagine, it's going to make a pass through this entire Python list, uh, this, set, uh, this uh, gr uh, group of people, this uh, queue of people, and it's going to do this computation. Then it's going to say 4 is greater than 3, and, and then it's going to go through and um, start calling out commands for each of the backward intervals. So in some sense, it's going to make two passes over the, the list. All right. So the first pass is to get all of the intervals together. Then there's a check. And then the second pass is to take those, those, uh, back, uh, those backward intervals, in this case, and call out those commands. All right. So that's what I mean by two passes. Um, yeah, please. Um, don't you, you don't necessarily need to count them, like the four and three. Isn't it what, because whichever, uh, like uh, orientation interval comes second is always incredible. brilliant, brilliant. You, you okay? So, uh, so I was going to say, um, uh, if you didn't understand what Ganatra said, uh, wonderful, <laughs> um, uh, because then you can you can you can you know, think about the question I'm going to ask um, and uh, ignore what he said, um, uh, and 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 then we'll uh, we'll get to the I guess uh, the the more efficient code. But uh, what I was going to ask was, is there a way? It, that I'm looking at this, and I'm just going, and I'm going to just start calling out uh, by uh, the moment I see that there's an interval. Okay, the moment I see there's, there's, there's like this is an interval, and and uh, I'm going to make a call with respect to whether I'm going to call out a command or not. All right, and I'm going to do this in one pass uh, through this through this array. Okay, I want to do this in one pass through the array. I, I want to look at this, and I say, I see the interval uh, 0, 0. All right. Um, is, is that going to be um, something that I need to worry about in terms of that person having to flip um, uh, his cap? Um, and then I see BB, and I say, oh, the interval is 1, 2. Is that, uh, is that something I'm going to have to deal with in terms of a command? Right? And so um, someone else other than Ganatra, uh, tell me if uh, there's a there's a one pass algorithm and explain to me uh, why you can do this in one pass through the array. And just in terms of code, um, I'll preview this. The first algorithm needs, uh, according to my coding, which isn't great, 26 lines of code. The second one needs eight lines of code. All right? So yeah, go ahead. But so so um, after you see the first interval, interval you know that the yeah. second interval, at the very least, is going to have the same number of like commands as the first one. So you might as well always go with the second one. So once you've identified what type the first interval is, uh, you 
iterate it through the list, seeing like, and once you identify the first and second intervals, you iterate through every type of the second interval and do a command for that. For that. That's absolutely right. What is your name? Uh, Kevin. Kevin. So, so you had it right, uh, and and uh, Kevin has it right as well. So the observation here is actually, uh, 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 if if I it, it was said a little bit differently by Kevin, but I'm going to say it uh, a little bit differently. And the observation is simply that um, that uh, if you look at the very first orientation, right? The 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 very first orientation um, is something which at best is is going to ha is going to be a tie. Right? So if you, uh, if you had it ending at with 10 people, 0 through 9, right? then the number of forward intervals is the same as the number of backwards intervals. Okay? And if you went here, obviously the number of forward intervals is greater than the number of backwards intervals. So you really only have to look at the first person in line to determine, not to determine the intervals, because you, know, you see the first person in line, you have no idea what the intervals are that are coming after, right? I mean, you, can't, you have to generate those intervals, so you have to make your pass through the array. But the first person in line gives it away in terms of um, what the final result is going to be with respect to your decision as to what set of commands, you, what set of commands you're going to call up, right? And so because this is an F, um, you, uh, you, you, you basically say, I'm going to go and I'm going to make the people with the, with the Bs uh, flip, their, flip their caps. All right? And uh, that's, uh, that's a small uh, observation uh, in, in terms of um, uh, it, it, its insight. Uh, but obviously, it's potent in the sense that uh, it's going to give you a one-pass algorithm versus a two-pass algorithm. And as I mentioned, it's going to give you a substantial reduction in the uh, amount of code that you write. All right? Um, so I'm going to show you um, uh, it, a bunch of code now. Right? So this is usually how this is going to go, by the way, uh, this, this entire uh, the, the class. Uh, and this is kind of my uh, uh, way of teaching at least this type of material that's algorithmic and has data structures and so on in it. Um, I like um, explaining to people what they're going to see in the code without having to deal with Python syntax and you know, worrying about uh, whether it's while loops or for loops and things like that, and tuples or arrays and things like that. Right? So uh, uh, let's, let's get into that. Uh, all right, I don't need this. Oh, good. Um, all right, so um, the naive algorithm first. OK? So um, what you see here. Um, is uh, an input. So caps is, uh, is simply um, an input Python list that has, uh, as you can see from our examples, the Fs and the Bs, right? And so F is forwards and B is backwards. And there's a couple of different um, Python lists, so you can run them with different things. Um, and you know, all of this, hopefully, is, is not at all surprising to you, because we went through all of this uh, in terms of the pseudocode, right? So the first uh, uh, initialization, um, and I can just highlight that to, to, to make it easy. So that's initialization. Um, and uh, this part here, the comment sort of gives it away, is um, you're, you're making a pass through the array computing the, computing the intervals. right? And so, so um, how do you actually get the intervals? And uh, there's one line of code uh, that, uh, that does that. Um, and oh, but by the way, if there's any questions about Python syntax, you know, just don't feel shy. Just, uh, just tell me, uh, uh, ask me, ask me a question. And I'm happy to explain it. I mean, if I'm, uh, I don't want to explain things that you all know, obviously. But uh, if any one of you doesn't know uh, any particular thing, please don't feel shy. Um, syntax is something that sometimes you even forget. I mean, I tend to forget things. Um, so this thing here um, is is essentially something that uh, that uh, decides on when the uh, what the intervals are. And and the insight here is simple. Um, you know that this interval ended when you see something here that is different from what the previous one is. Right? So that's when you know. So you generate the interval. right? You generate the interval um, when uh, you, you go and find something that is different from uh, the current uh, uh, location that you're pointing to. Right? So that's really what's going on out here. Um, you're in, in this line, you say um, uh, you're, you're uh, setting 
a start here. Start is your counter. And remember, start is getting um, uh, set again here. Um, initially, it was set to 0. And if you ever get to the point where you're looking at i, it's the next thing you're looking at. And if cap start, which is the start of the interval, is different from i, it meant that the interval that began with start ended. Okay. And so you essentially say, well, that, that needs to end at i minus 1, because obviously cap start is different from cap psi. So this is the end of the interval right here. All right. And um, this particular thing is our interval is, is, is something that includes um, both these two numbers. So it's not exactly that, but it also includes, um, where did my chalk go? Um, it, it also includes uh, whether this is an f or not. So each of these things has, uh, I'm not going to write it out for all of those things, but uh, has uh, the, the orientation inside of it. So that's uh, what you have out here. Right? That's why we have three of these in this tuple. Right? This is a tuple because it's got um, round brackets around it. Um, I could have made it, uh, I, I could have made it uh, a list if I wanted. Um, and so that's essentially what we have here. And um, now here's what happens. In this particular piece of code, um, when you get to the end and you fall off the end, um, so if you, if you just end, then um, this code essentially uh, skips over and doesn't, uh, doesn't actually put in the last interval, right? Because you don't see something when you come up here and you're, you're off the end of the array, you fall off the edge of the array, uh, you don't see a b that is different from f, right? So, so this, the, if you just wrote that code, so it's something that uh, uh, I'd say in many people would, uh, could, uh, would, have a, would have a, quote, bug, where they wouldn't add this part of the code here uh, because um, I, they didn't realize this particular point that I made. Which, and so that last interval doesn't get uh, added in. right? Um, and so you have a bit more code here that uh, decides on the last interval. Um, and, uh, and then you count. And then you go ahead and call the commands. All right. So this all looks good. Yeah, we're good with this. Um, is there a way that I could somehow eliminate these four lines of code, which are a little bit annoying, and, and just do things in the array? How, how could I, uh, with a little trick, I could eliminate um, th those four lines of code? I mean, I might, I, I, I might need a little bit more you know, quote, pre-processing, but how do I eliminate that? Someone else? I'll get to you. Yep, go ahead. Uh, one way is you can check whether the, uh, you've reached the end of the, uh, before you execute the comparison. You can have an extra check. What's your name? Kanishka. Kanishka. So Kanishka says that uh, uh, before you reach the end of the array, uh, uh, you, uh, or, or when you reach the end of the array, uh, you go ahead and, 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 uh, and do a check that you've reached the end and generate the interval inside of it, which is kind of like moving this code inside of it, right? So that's, that's reasonable. I'm not sure that's going to be as good as the way I'm, uh, that I want and which, uh, which, which I coded. Um, think about uh, uh, pre-processing. Uh, think about taking the array. Yeah? You can add on the wrong interval. What was your name? Kevin. Kevin, too? OK, all right. This, how many Kevins do we have here? Um, OK, so, uh, so, so uh, you, could, you could do this, right? So let me, let me show you something that's a little bit more. So, so that was uh, 26 lines of code. Uh, and so this says, this is the line that's interesting. So I had f and b, right? And so I don't want to add f or b there. But you know, what, is, what is convenient to do, as it turns out, is to just have something that essentially says there's an ending point. So you have an explicit end to the array that is actually uh, a, a, not something that would crash if you tried to access it, right? You've added, you had n people in line, and now you have effectively you know, n plus 1 people in line, but that um, n plus 1 person is a dummy, right? Um, or you, know, uh, you can call them end. And, and then if you do that, uh, then uh, that's it. The previous code works. Uh, you, know, you can just remove those four lines, and it'll all just work. Right? Because uh, your, your f or your b is not equal to end. Right? So the, the, uh, whatever you had at the end, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, overloading terms here. Uh, whatever you, you had at the, at, the, at, at the last element, whether it was a, it was a b because it's ended here, or f, 
uh, when you equate that to E and G, uh, you're going to get uh, an inequality. And so that last interval gets generated. Okay? So, so small optimization. Tony Hoare was a very famous computer scientist, um, said that inside every program, there's a smaller program waiting to get out. Okay, so, so this is kind of uh, uh, one of the themes that I'd like to, uh, uh, to harp on in this class, which is uh, it's nice to write compact code. Usually if you can write compact code, uh, there's fewer, fewer bugs in it. I mean, you don't want to go overboard. You don't want too many subtleties, but uh, it's, it's nice to write compact code. And so this is a little bit more compact. And, and then finally, here's uh, the, the one-pass algorithm. Right? So the whole thing, uh, so the please conform one pass is the, uh, is, is the, uh, the smarter algorithm that essentially says, uh, look, if I just look at the very first thing, um, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to be able to uh, skip that and then move on. Right? So this is fairly complicated. I mean, it's, uh, it do, uh, it, I, you know the algorithm. Um, trying to map that to this code is non-trivial, so we'll spend a minute or two on it. Right? Um, but here's, uh, 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 here's how this works, right? Um, and by the way, just to make sure, um, so I've repeated things here. So the first, the optimized algorithm for that particular example uh, produced these first three commands. And then uh, the, uh, the one pass algorithm produced exactly the same commands, right? So this is good to do. Um, it's always nice to have a couple of different ways of solving a problem uh, because then you can, you can verify things, right? Uh, anyway, so, so this piece of code um, is essentially something that um, does a similar trick to what we had before um, in terms of uh, adding uh, to, the, to the original list, uh, adding an, an, an element, but we're not using E and D here. Uh, we're actually saying, uh, uh, we, what, what we want to do, because we're going to go ahead and skip this anyway, we know we're going to skip the F. So um, uh, we're, whatever that is, we could just sort of add up here. Right? And um, so that's, uh, that makes it easy. You don't have to worry about uh, what, the, uh, what the actual characters are and, and cooking up this E and D, which is different from the F or the B, because, you know, hey, uh, it's possible that, uh, that, that people might use whatever they want to represent a forward cap or a backward cap. So this is very clean. Um, you go ahead and put exactly that over here. You know you're going to skip that interval because of the, uh, you're going to skip the, the, first, uh, uh, the first interval effectively because that is what the algorithm allows you to do. Um, and then this part here is, uh, is doing uh, what we had uh, before. We're not even generating the intervals. We're just directly making the commands, right? So there's no tuples in terms of uh, the tuples and the appending of the intervals data structure that we had, it's all, go it's all gone. I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, fire off these commands, right? And those commands are, 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 uh, are, are uh, they're written in kind of a funny way, right? Because um, I, I'm going to go ahead um, and if I wanted to print these things out, you'd have to do this in this funny way. Um, if you're willing to wait and collect up the intervals, you could certainly do that, right? But this is, absolutely the most compact code that I could think of. Um, and I'm printing a command in two different parts, right? I'm printing the first part of the command that says people in positions, um, and that's the start of the interval, i, right? And I'm just using a Python construct. So this, this E and D here um, is, uh, is something that uh, the print command can recognize. And this simply says, don't give me a new line. I want to print it exactly as you saw from when I ran the code, the printing was exactly the same as the original algorithm, right? And so this E and D simply says, don't print a new line at the end of, uh, uh, of people in positions, you know, whatever this number is, call it seven, and, and you don't print a new line. Um, and then you go, you have a space here uh, because you didn't print a new line or, or a space, and you go through I minus one, which is exactly the same as we had before, you only discover that at the end of an interval after you see uh, the person that comes after the interval, right? So you have to go back to I minus one. So this makes sense? Any questions about this code? 
Yeah, go ahead. So like the first line, like you said, that we're going to move the first. Uh, Not move, uh, duplicate. Uh, du uh, duplicate first. Yeah, so the plus there um, is a concatenation. And you have two lists. Caps is a list. And you, when you use a plus operator in Python, the, you, you can only add things that are of the same type. Okay. And so um, caps is a, is a list, and cap zero is an element of the list. And so you need to make it a list in order to uh, use the plus operator. You, there's also other things you could do using append, for example. Right? So you could take that line, and you could do caps.append cap zero. Right? And you wouldn't need all of the square brackets. But you know, that's just neither here nor there. But I'm obviously not answering your question. So go ahead. Yeah. yeah so like, I was going to say that we skip the first interval, right? And yeah. then we flip all of like, the second type orientation. That's right. But here we're focusing on the first element, right? I, I mean, just the. Uh, ah, but, but that's OK. Because um, uh, remember, the if statement um, uh, is, is going to skip uh, the, uh, uh, this one, too. So if I had two f's in the beginning, I think your question is, what would happen if I had two f's uh, or three f's in the beginning? right? So I'm going to go ahead, and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an f at the end here. And then maybe there's a bunch of stuff. But then the nice thing is that I'll skip this f, too, because, uh, because the not equal to, um, is, not going to um, is, is not going to fire, right? right? The next line, the caps i not equal to i minus 1, uh, th th this, is, this is going to be equal to. So I, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next iteration of the loop. That makes sense? Did, did people understand uh, Fadi's question? Right? It was a good question. Right? Um, so the question was, um, you, uh, you skip the first one, but what is making you skip this one? Because you want to skip the first interval, correct? And so that uh, if statement is making you do that. All right? Good. So as you can see, even a fairly straightforward puzzle, this is the simplest puzzle we're going to do here, right? Is the first one. You know, and there's nuances associated with how you solve it, but also how you code it, right? Um, and um, this is kind of, uh, as I said, you know, my um, uh, uh, this was my eureka moment, you know, a few years ago. But I said, um, I think the way you want to teach programming is 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 uh, at least some some aspects of programming is in this fashion, right? Anyway, good. So um, we're done with this. Uh, any questions about this puzzle? All right.